What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to take you along with us for an incredible backyard gardening harvest. You won't believe how much food we're going to be harvesting just today. Let's go! Let's jump right into the harvesting. In a bit, I'm going to bring you over to the Rainier Cherry. It's insane how many cherries are ripe and ready to be picked on that thing. To start things off, let's grab a few things from this section right here. Look how much food is in here, ready to be harvested. This right here is something that I've never grown before. The Golden Beauty Chinese Cabbage. Let's start things off right here. I'm gonna pick this thing, and uh, it's gonna be hard to even cut out because of how massive it is. Absolutely huge. Let's just hack away at it. There we go, look at this. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. It's unbelievably heavy. Look at the size of this, amazing. It says peel back the, uh, the outer leaves and you should have a beautiful yellow cabbage on the inside. I bet Tuck is gonna love these things too. Tuck, wanna try one? Let's get him one that doesn't have a lot of dirt. He'll probably like to snack on these stems. This stuff is all edible, but I just wanna see how nice this, uh, the yellow part looks on the cabbage. Let's peel back just a few, few more here. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of that thing. That is beautiful. Stunning. There's so many more things to grab though. So let's keep moving. And eventually we'll make our way over to the cherries and not too long, but I have other cabbages that are ready to be harvested in different locations, green cabbages too. Let me get my scissors. There's so many lettuces that we need to grab also. Lettuces over there, lettuces right here. Let's grab one of these real quick. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Just so nice, picturesque. And check out this right here, the clementine cauliflower. This thing's starting to get ready. Look at that bright orange color. Nature paints the most beautiful pictures. Let's keep moving. And uh, check out the strawberries over here. The strawberries are in peak performance right now. Swing into here. Check out all these ripe strawberries back here. Look at this spot even right here. Look how many strawberries are in there and ready. You saw I'm using this insect netting. That makes it so not even the birds or anything can get to these strawberries but me. And man, are they good. Look at this. It's hard to beat a fresh strawberry right from the garden. Let's have a quick taste. Absolutely delicious. So many other things to grab though. Swing bar over here. We've got radishes ready. We'll grab some of those and look right below there. More strawberries. Oh my gosh, look at the size of these ones. A little dirt on it, but that never hurt. Stunning. I'm gonna grab a bunch of strawberries and I'll show you at the end how many that I'm actually grabbing. But I wanna move over to a different spot. Take a peek here though. More strawberries, so many, just underneath the fruit tree. The blueberries right next to me, those will be next. And there's gonna be a huge harvest this year when it comes to blueberries. Come over here, check out the tomatoes. Doing fantastic, growing up a trellis. Check out this steel raised bed right here. Look how much food is growing. I mean, when have you ever seen a bed this absolutely packed with food? Look at the size of this lettuce. This is the slow bolt leaf lettuce. This is huge. These carrots here, almost ready. I've got carrots in a different section that are ready to harvest. We'll grab some of those so Tuck can have one. But let me bring you over to a cabbage. The early Jersey Wakefield cabbage used to be my earliest cabbage until the Ferreo showed up. This green cabbage is ready and it's only, it's early June here. This is by far my earliest cabbage that I've ever had. And look, we've got another Golden Beauty cabbage over there. But this is the earliest cabbage, the Freyo, that I've ever grown. Let's harvest this one. Let's cut this out. Look at that. Look how dense it is. Ready to go. This is gonna be incredible, nutrient dense, dense, organic, delicious food. I'll drop this here, because we've got more stuff we wanna move over to. Check out this bed. The Lalo Rosa lettuce. Look at that, look at the color. And it uh, looks like Tuck's looking for another snack, so let's grab him a carrot. I've got some Napoli carrots in here. I'm sure a few of them are ready. Oh yeah, nice shape to it. You'll love to see it. And look at this right here. 
early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, almost finished, really nice. Hey Tuck, want a carrot boy? This guy's been waiting all season for some fresh carrots, or all year. We'll give him one of these, one of his all time favorite garden snacks. So incredibly delicious. Right boy? He loves these things. Oh yeah, that's the crunch we were waiting for, right boyo? Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. So we'll let him keep crunching on this and grab a few more things. Then we're gonna head over to the cherries because I'm just absolutely blown away and stunned by how many cherries are on the tree this year and how they just taste so dang good. Let's move over here though. Check here. Beds just loaded with food. Here's a bronze mignonette lettuce, one of my all time favorites. Next to more slow bolt. Carrots, atomic uh, red. Purple carrots, I think, in here. Let's. We, I wonder if any of these are finished. Let's just try to see. Ooh, getting there. Nice color. Look at that color. Oh my gosh. That is picturesque. Let's snap into it. I think it's got a different color on the inside. Oh yeah. Look at that. That is crazy. These are the um, the purple the purple dragons. Man, that is really cool looking. And I bet it tastes fantastic. Let me just wipe it just for a second. Have a quick taste. Mmm. Mmm. Incredibly sweet. Look at Tuck over there. Having the time of his life with that carrot. Pretty good stuff, huh, boy? He's been snacking on radishes. They're just not as good as the fresh carrots. So it's carrot season. We're both loving it. I'm going to drop this carrot right here and let him move on to this one if he wants to. But we'll grab some more carrots for the harvest. And check it out back here. Here's another Foreo cabbage ready. The other day, Tuck was picking at this one, but this one needs to get harvested because it's dense and it's ready to go. And when we take this out, we'll be able to plant something else in this location. Continuously getting food. We always got something else on deck, but look at that. Another excellent cabbage. And then right behind me, the broccolis are starting to come in. We've got so many broccolis. We're gonna take this one, even though it's still relatively small, because uh, we're gonna be harvesting a lot of broccoli coming up. So. We're going to extend that harvest by picking some early. Excellent. Now though, I want to move over to the cherries. Before I do that though, me and Tuck wanted to mention, if you enjoy this video, then share it with your friends and maybe this will motivate them to grow some of their own food in their backyard. Anybody can do this and it's such a joy to be able to eat the food like that you're growing. It's so much fun. Also hit the subscribe button down low and don't forget to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab one of the Guardian is Life shirts with the flower of life on it and be part of the team. Let's move over to the cherries though. We're gonna move over into the old food forest here. You'll notice all the clay I have on these trees. This is the surround kaolin clay. I put it on thick right now because the plump curculio are really gonna be coming out heavy heading into the second week of June. I have that in my garden notes to let me know. Time to put the clay on heavy. Check out the Rainier cherry. Unbelievable amount of cherries. And they are at peak right now. Look at this. This one little branch. And there are some that are so ripe. The birds are gonna start taking these, so I gotta make sure I take them. Look at the branches though, look how loaded they are. It's just insane how much fruit it is. This looks like a super ripe one. Let's get a taste of it real quick. Unbelievable flavor, so sweet, so good. Just take another peek of that. I'm gonna harvest a bunch of these cherries. I'm not gonna do it on film because that will take a while, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then the ones all the way at the top that we can't reach, we'll just let the birds have those ones. Let's keep going this way. Check out all the tomatoes. We've got this section just looking fantastic. Think about it, a wall of tomatoes over here, a wall of tomatoes over there, fruit trees down the middle, blueberries. Tomato Alley is going to be out of control this year. Peek to my left here. Look at the potatoes. Look at the lush green color on these potatoes. That, these are the best looking potatoes that I've ever grown. That's gonna be a nice harvest coming up in the future. But let's grab a couple peas. A few different colors of peas. We've got the sugar magnolia, purple peas. We'll harvest a bunch of these. Really good flavor. We've got the green peas to my left over here. This is the best variety of peas that you can grow. The sugar snap pea, best flavor, grow fantastic. But you can see the birds really know that this is the best tasting one. They've been just eating these leaves and just destroying them basically. But still, we're still gonna get a really nice harvest. Peak down low. 
I've already planted my cucumbers in this spot in front of my peas. The cucumbers are going to set up and grow in this spot as the peas get cut down and we'll let the nitrogen nodules in the peas feed the cucumbers. Come to the right here. This is the spot that Tucka, <laughs> Tuck decided the yellow peas are his favorite ones. Look at him, look at him in there looking for peas. He's been, he's been nuts this year. He th hey, come on Tuck, come on Tuck. He thinks that since he's the boss, he can do whatever he wants, which he's probably right about that, right boy? Look at, look at the peas he pulled down over here, the yellow ones. That's okay though, because we're getting ready to put the cucumbers in anyways, so we're gonna harvest a lot of these peas. These yellow ones are really nice, just awesome looking stuff. Hey, keep, keep busy with one of these, boy. You like these, huh? Yeah, the peas are pretty good stuff. So uh, instead of meat and everything, you get Tuck to eat everything because he's gonna give you the true, honest opinion. And when he snacks on something like that, you know for sure that it is Tuck approved, which is major. We've got more stuff to grab though. Let's keep going this way. New apple tree we put in right here, looking really nice. Here's the cedar raised bed with the shosugi ban. Look at the how excellent that looks. Just so incredible. We've got uh, every kind of kale you can think of in here. Broccoli, lettuces that need to be harvested. Look at this, another Ferreo cabbage that looks like it's about to be ready to go. This thing is just, I mean, there's so much food back here. If I actually harvested every little thing, it would be like a two hour video. Look at right here, more strawberries just scattered. This one is uh, bad, but look at strawberries just scattered throughout the garden everywhere. You can never have too many strawberries, that's for sure. Above us, peaches, old peach tree. This thing is, a lot of peaches on it and I've got peaches in another spot which are huge even further ahead than these ones but I want to grab some raspberries as we pass by this peach tree you'll notice how how open I prune it because I prune it so open so many there's a lot of light that can come through a lot of windows of light so what we like to do is grow some tomatoes up a string look at that look how nice it looks too grow the tomato up a string up the peach tree this way we've got peaches growing, uh, this way we have tomatoes growing on peaches. Nice little combo. Come this way, another tomato back there. Super sweet 100 I think it is. And let's grab some fresh raspberries. These things are so good. My favorite all time raspberry, the yellow ones. We've got the fall gold and the yellow in here. These are so incredibly sweet. So much sweeter than your red raspberries in my opinion. And they just melt in your mouth, so good. Mm. Tastes like a candy. Doesn't taste anything like a fruit. It's unbelievable. A lot of raspberries are ready on here. I need to bring you over to another cherry that has so much fruit on it. Let's go this way. Notice something as you look up a little bit. We heavily pruned these grapes, cut a lot of the fan leaves out because we need a good amount of light to access the fruit so we don't have any issues. So we cut a lot of this out and that's what I've always done in the past. It's worked really well for me. As we head over to the cherries, look at this one. <laughs> this is actually a sour cherry, but it has a really good flavor. It's not super sour. I believe it might be the Stella, I think. Uh, look it up there. Just, oh my gosh, so many cherries. It's, uh, it's gonna take even a long time to harvest this, but harvesting is the funnest thing to do, besides maybe eating this stuff. Come this way, hazelnuts, unbelievable. Look at all the nuts. These are the young hazelnuts. If the, uh, if the squirrels don't get them all, we're gonna have our biggest harvest ever by far. So this year has just been amazing so far and we're so happy you guys are coming along with it. Uh, this is why we guard in the backyard. Not only to be able to eat the food, but to be able to share it with everyone, to hopefully encourage some of you guys to start growing some of your own organic food in the backyard. You'll surprise yourself on how much you can grow and you will be surprised on how good the fruit the vegetables, how good everything tastes, and how rewarding it is to be a part of the whole entire process. I thought the persimmons were gonna take off this year because there were so many last year, but they decided they're gonna have huge harvests too. Look at these. This is the flowers all getting pollinated. There's gonna be little mini persimmons at the end of them. So it looks like it's gonna be a fantastic year again. This tree has gotten huge. That's okay though. We don't have to spray that tree because the rind on it is so thick. This one we do have to spray with just the surround kale and clay, it's just clay. This is our Chajiro pear. I always love showing this one because it's been a staple in the garden for a long time. The tree isn't big, but it does really big things. Let's keep going over here. 
check out these raised beds. Look at the amount of lettuce ready in here too. And I gotta give a little highlight to my favorite variety of kale, the dazzling blue. Not only does it look incredible, it tastes fantastic too. You gotta get this one in the ground if you've never grown it before. You need to have things like that. When the, it starts to get too hot out that the lettuces uh, really, can't really produce in the heat of the summer, the kales always come through strong and so do the Swiss chards. Swiss chard is one of those things everyone should be growing and not enough people do grow it. it you plant it in the spring and this thing just kicks out food till like uh, l way late in the season. So we love having Swiss chard in this section right here. We had some issues with, with the garden symphylon. That's okay. They don't like the potatoes. So we planted rows of potatoes. They're doing really nicely. And you can see here, look at this broccoli. Look how much worse it's doing than the other section. So the coal crops are one of those things that the symphylon really attack heavily. We're going to turn like what was a problem into food. That's just the way we're going to approach it. And I've got some, uh, some ideas on how to deal with it a lot of them from you in the future. But for now, we're just gonna spend this season growing food, growing flowers, and just getting the most out of the spot. The lettuces don't seem to be having a problem over here. A few different kinds. Look at that, must be the speckled Amish, a romaine variety, and then it looks like the devil's ears. So cool. This way over here, we've got the apple, the Liberty apple. Just look how thick I painted it with the clay. I'm not letting the plum curculio get to this fruit. It looks too dang good. There's so much on there. Great size, so I wanna have a lot of apples this year. People ask if the clay stops some of the photosynthesis, photosynthesis on the plants. I don't think it really has much of an issue. I've used it many years in the past. It's specifically designed for this, and I even spray it on my young cucumbers, and they seem to grow fantastic too. Over here, tomatoes looking really nice in the pallet raised bed. There's so much food in here. I think the little boss is looking for another snack. Don't worry, we got carrots for him in here. Let's grab one of these carrots. He, he wants to harvest his own over there. We'll grab him some. There's gotta be something close in here to ready. This is the new Corotta. Look at that. Look at the shape. So how do we get the carrots to grow so beautifully? One of the big issues, look, he found, he found his own carrot. Dude, this one, those ones are weak. This is a good carrot, brother have this one. So one of the things with carrots is they don't like having a lot of obstructions when they're growing, sticks and, and rocks and things. So we've built a really nice healthy soil with good structure. This way the carrots not only have the nutrition and everything that they need, but they also have uh, a good growing space and a good medium to be able to get this perfect shape. And I want to try this one now that he had a bite. Let me just crack it off where he bit. Try a piece at the end here. Mmm. Mmm. Good, mild, sweet flavor. The Purple Dragon had more of that carrot flavor. This one has very mild, very sweet flavor. Incredibly good. We'll let the boss finish it off. And I want to take you over to here, just real quick. More tomatoes. A lot of these sunflowers, look at the size of them already, have come up on their own. So these are going to be monster volunteers. And even here, this is an apple tree I planted only three years ago, two or three years ago. It already has apples on it. We're excited about that. So there's a lot more stuff that I'm going to be harvesting. I didn't want to grab all of it on camera because it just would have taken so long. But I'm going to grab a lot of the stuff and then we'll show you what it looks like at the end. And uh, it looks like Tuck's still having a lot of fun over there. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope this video motivated you to plant a garden in your backyard if you haven't before. And even if you have, if this is your first year and you're having some issues, do not quit. Experience is one of the greatest tools a gardener has. Start keeping your garden journal. And I promise you in, uh, in a few years or at some point, you'll be able to be surrounded by food, just like me and Tuck. You might need someone like Tuck to be able to teach you all the stuff. This guy has all the tricks, all the tips, and we basically just follow his lead. That's why he always gets the first bite of the snacks because he earned it. We wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. To mention, to share this video with your friends if you got some value out of it. Also, we want to mention to hit the join now button down at the bottom if you want to be a part of Team Grow and check out the merch at jamesprigioni.com. We wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Betty Fox. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here in all the harvests. You'll notice it's a bit smoky today. There was a big fire, I think it was in Canada. So it hasn't been the greatest conditions, but Tuck's been a soldier out here. We wanted to 
show you guys the cherries and everything while they're in peak production to be able to share that with you guys to hopefully encourage you and motivate you to keep on growing. Tuck and James, we're gonna have to sign out. We'll be back to you again real soon. We out.